Uh, we are gathered here today to say goodbye to a Redskins sellout streak that's been with us for 50 years. Attendance on Sunday was a little more than 57,000, 25,000 short of 82,000. The capacity listed in the old Redskins good book. Hell to the rescue. Now we all know the product on the field changed and so did the demand for tickets to sit in the pews to watch it. But I was stuck in the overflow. So we say our final goodbye to the ticket waiting list, to the dedicated fans who waited over a decade to sit where they sold oxygen instead of popcorn. Now to be sitting at home eating stale popcorn. We also say goodbye to the time Dan Snyder said there was 200,000 fans waiting in the waiting list. Was that true? Nah, I don't think so. But what is true, people, is our goodbye to the Redskins sellout streak. I'm pulling out for my homies. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you want to go for music? myself save a man of different talents different jack of all trades pride myself on being able to adapt so the biggest thing for me is yes you play football but what legacy do you leave from the moment we're born the life we live adds up to who we are now. Dwayne Haskins has been playing football since he was eight years old, but has always been preparing for the game of life. Is this like the, the dad chair? It used to be the dad chair. Oh, it used to be the dad chair. You are, you are more than welcome to you sit in the dad? massage chair. If you want to get a quick massage, massage chair, chair. <laughs> you go ahead and you get you. My dad always told me that I had three aspects of my life, the sports, social life, and school. I chose to be great at school and football. What did I always tell you guys about grades? Like, I always used to say to them, you know, C is passing, but C is average. So, you know, you're not average, so I expect A's and B's. I remember being in middle school and being scared to get a C, so I'll go to the teacher and be like, is there any way I can do extra credit or something? You know, they always, always told us to chase our dreams, and so, did a great job raising us. All right, I'm good to go now. Y'all ready? So what's life been like for you the last month and a half? Hectic, a lot of flight miles, uh, a lot of meetings. I'm trying to juggle everything at once. Do you, are you looking forward to it kind of, the, the ending of it? Yeah, can't wait. I uh, went back to Ohio State and went to a couple of practices, went to the spring game and it just made me miss it more, miss me around the guys, miss playing. All right, I think we're going to this park right here. Oh. Everything has come together. It's like the rites of passage. Everything's just matched up. We're at the draft. Okay. Lady, what's up? All right, keep it rolling, me, Dad. <laughs> Your son's called. Whatever NFL team it is. Your son's name's called. How are you going to react? pinch myself. Really? I might have a moment. I might shed a tear. I just never thought he'll get to this point. I just wanted him to play football. I just wanted to see him play. It was never, ever, ever, ever about the NFL. It was never about going to college to be the number one quarterback. It was about the dream. It's, it's all said and done. It's about a dream. Uh, just for me, the biggest thing is, um, you know, getting back to the kids because when I was a kid and uh, 10 years old at Ohio State, I was looking up to Troy Smith, and now I'm a quarterback the kids looking up to it over in Ohio, so uh, it's crazy to me. So I'll go back to my high school, and the kids in elementary school know who I am. That's so humbling to me. Uh, yesterday I was with my sister, and we were walking around school. People were signing, 
had little kids come up to talk to me and ask me to sign their backpack. I'm like, <laughs> you know, so it's, it's just cool. So, you know, my whole entire life was, was built upon being a great quarterback, great person, great, great brother, great son. Everything I do, I want to be great at, and that's hard for people, but it's not for me. Of course, people have their own criticism and they have their own perspective, but they don't know who I am as a person, what drives me, what motivates me to get better. I know that in six years, I'll probably win one or two Super Bowls by then. And, uh, you know, I just, I have a lot of goals and I write them down and my goals haven't failed me yet, so we'll see. Let's see, I'll break it. Bam. The receivers will be much better at the next level. I hope so. I'm <laughs> Appreciate it, my man. Thank you. Appreciate Here's what's on my mind tonight. January 1st, 2014, a black man was snatched out of his car, beaten up by the police because he simply asked, why was he pulled over? That black man was me. Did they do it because I was black? I don't know. I know both of the officers were white. After one officer asked what I did for a living, they dismissed every charge, even treated me differently. I know every police officer isn't bad, but I was lucky that night. That wasn't the case for Philando Castile, Eric Garner, and more. So when I see Colin Kaepernick as the face of Nike's Just Do It campaign, I see hope for people like me. I saw it all over our social media accounts, people using their free speech to criticize a company for using their free speech to defend someone's free speech. Yeah, it sounds crazy to me. When I see people burning their Nike shoes, it comes off like you support social injustice and what happened to me almost five years ago. Instead of burning your Nike apparel, give them to the homeless veteran I saw in Gaithersburg, Maryland earlier today. Give them to the Salvation Army, our low income people. To just burn them because you don't like a company supporting someone who's trying to save lives like mine is dumb and a waste of money. Your money. Instead of burning shoes to protest protesting, how about burning candles to honor those who have been unjustly murdered? Because if we don't recognize what Colin Kaepernick is doing, people, that is protesting social injustice, there will be another person talking about how they survive police brutality if they're lucky to survive it like me. That's what's on my mind. So which number will Adrian Peterson wear? He wore number 28 in high school, college, and for most of his NFL career, but y'all know he ain't getting number 28. Looks good on him, by the way, but that number belongs to two-time Super Bowl champion Daryl Green. No Redskins player has worn number 28 since Green retired. Now look at the Redskins website. It has Peterson's number as negative one. Yeah, we know that's not going to last. How about number 23? Here's a picture of Peterson rocking the number when he was with the Cardinals. Now here's a picture of Peterson today with Quentin Dunbar, the guy who currently wears number 23. Topper, what do you see here? What do I see, D? Well, this time of year, we often see it. Yep, developing drama. I feel you, Topper. Unless Peterson convinced or paid Dunbar to switch, Peterson's not wearing number 23. You think Quentin Dunbar wants to go back to wearing whack number 47? <laughs> Heck no. I believe Peterson will wear number 26, and I had to go way back, back when we had hairlines we wish we had now. 1993, Little League football. There's Peterson rocking number 26. And guess what? Nobody currently wears number 26 on the Redskins roster. If I'm right, people, call me now for your free tarot reading. This is Shinadu. Hey, this is Darren. You ready for the Texan Redskins game? <laughs> you ready for that Texas size L? The only W you're gonna get is the one in Washington. Man, tell me something good about Houston. We're the best tailgaters hands down, and we gonna be out there. Be out where? Man, have you checked the weather we've been getting lately? You know Texas shuts down in weather like this, man. I guess I'll make it even, because I heard your players say your fans don't even show up anyways. I'm going to pray for you. Father God, I pray that after the Redskins take this loss, that they bounce back, Father. Pray for a Redskins loss? Man, we already had a Texans funeral. It's so hard to say goodbye to the Houston Texans, yeah. I'm pulling out from my homie. Here's the best thing I saw last night. Nationals pitcher Max Scherzer with a broken nose and black eye. And this is how it all happened, people. The ball hit Scherzer, boom, right there in the face doing bunning drills on Tuesday night. 24 hours later, Scherzer said, I'm pitching. And the dude was a beast in the Nats 2-0 win over Philly. Scherzer pitched seven innings, didn't allow a single run, and struck out 10 batters. 
all with a stinking broken nose. Max, with your blue, brown, and now black eye, tell me how you feel. I felt zero pain tonight. Uh, for me, the, the thing I actually had to get used to was when I was warming up, the, uh, the swelling underneath my eye was kind of jiggling around. And uh, once I got kind of used to that in the warm ups, uh, by the time I actually went out there for the uh, game, I got used to it and I felt good. So, one word for Max Scherzer moment. This was a legendary moment for Max Scherzer. I mean, just look at the dude's face. But still, he struck out 10 batters for the 88th time in his career. That leads all active pitchers. This was his 20th game with 10 strikeouts and no runs allowed. Only seven others were able to put up those numbers, and two of them are in the Hall of Fame, people. This moment will always be remembered as the black eye game. That's why moment is my one word. I'm Darren Haynes. Whew. Get up, DC. Here's what's on my mind today. Megan Rapino isn't backing down. The U.S. women's soccer captain said this recently. I'm not going to the White House. No, I'm not going to the White House. That's, okay. We're not going to be invited. You're not going to be invited? I doubt this it. Is... That led to President Donald Trump responding on Twitter, tweeting in part, Megan should never disrespect our country, the White House, or our flag. Yesterday, Megan still stands by her decision. I stand by the comments that I made about not wanting to go to the White House, um, with the exception of the expletive. My mom will be very upset about that. I don't think that I would want to go, and um, I would encourage my teammates to think hard about lending that platform or having that co-opted um, by an administration that doesn't feel the same way and doesn't fight for the same things that, that we fight for. Now, I respect Megan Rapino for standing up for what she believes in. You may agree or disagree with the way she's protesting, but what Megan Rapino is saying and doing isn't supposed to make everyone feel good. I mean, do you think a GM feels great when there's a picket line outside their business or the British were singing happy, happy, joy, joy during the Boston Tea Party? Heck no. Now, freedom of speech doesn't mean freedom from consequence. Megan Rapino is going to face criticism. But if we make it hard to express our opinions, our right to have a freedom of speech in our country is pointless. I'm Darren Haynes. Get up, D.C. All right, change the beat up. Time for my last call. Let's stop hating on John Wall. Wall just completed successful surgery on his ruptured left Achilles. His recovery timeline ranges from 11 to 15 months. On social media, I saw Wizards fans calling him a waste of money, trash, and RIP to his career. Well, listen here, Twitter tough guys. Wall has been dealing with his mother having cancer, the same disease that killed his father, the birth of his son, and two tough injuries over the last two seasons. Instead of constantly slandering him or his contract, send him a tweet the same way y'all send all that negative stuff, wishing he and his family a quick recovery. This isn't about basketball anymore. It's about life. That's my last call. But what's the level of swag that you're going to bring, 1 to 10? Mine's always a 10. I'm just smooth. I'm just, just real silent assassin. Just like my game, you know, just silent. My swag is silent. But I kill you, too. Like, it's just it's crazy how it works. They're going to need some love on these three-point shots. <laughs> oh, for 16. I mean, Ouch, look. yeah. I mean, look, it's just, it's simple. It's simple. Howard, open it up. Give me three. Give me three. Come on, come on. That's oh, simple, huh? He I'm was just trying. as good. I'm just, I'm just as good wait, as the Miss. Wait, we got more paper, Sign Dave. We got more paper. Come on. Hey, we're 0 for 1. I'm 0 for 1. Hold on now. All come right, on. go on. All right. Show him how it's done. <laughs> that's what go. I'm talking about. I didn't about. even have to move on. Elena Deladon, that's how you do it. Now that it's NCAA tournament time, work productivity around here is expected to decrease. 37.3 million people are expected to participate in March Madness office pools, according to Vault.com. One estimate says during March Madness, companies can lose up to $2.3 billion in lost productivity. No, actually it's 6.3 billion. That's my boss. It all adds up. Filling out brackets, discussing and betting on games with coworkers. Syracuse lost. You definitely owe me $50. And streaming games online. It's become a lot easier thanks to the invention of the boss button. Hey, boss is coming. With just one click, the button will immediately change your screen from basketball to what appears to be a PowerPoint page filled with charts. During the first two days of the tournament, approximately half of the 32 games are played during normal business hours. Workers on the West Coast can watch games as early as 9.15 a.m. So how are you going to watch the NCAA tournament games? I know how I am. <laughs>